And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm just having a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Adobe Premiere Pro and how to work with audio within a sequence. This is basically how to uh, adjust volume levels in audio, how to mix together audio with the mixer, how to uh, add background music to your audio in your video, and how to adjust the volume so they're balanced out perfectly. How to analyze different audio levels to make sure that they're in sync how to add voiceovers how to add a piece of video to another video within your video to sort of overlap it so that your audio still goes over the new footage all that kind of stuff so everything you'd want to do with audio in premiere pro i'm sort of going to go over a little bit in this video um, now, if you have Adobe Audition, it's a great program that works very well with uh, Premiere Pro. Because if you can see here, uh, right now here I have a, just a random, I have a video from my uh, main channel, my vlogging channel. I just took this video from my vlogging channel and we're going to use it as a sample video for this tutorial. So I have a video here, I have the videos audio here, and then I have some, uh, some background music here from No Copyright Sounds, Alan Walker's Fade track. Love that track. I think it's one of the best uh, releases they've made on NCS. But essentially, you can right-click a piece of audio and edit the clip in Adobe Audition. Even if it's part of your video, you can even edit the video's audio in Adobe Audition. Even though there's no actual separate audio file you can actually create that separate audio file and edit it in audition so the two programs work really well together and as you make changes in audition they dynamically change in premiere pro as well so it's a really great program but if you don't have audition don't worry because everything in this tutorial will not be using adobe audition and a lot of the things you can do in audition dynamically uh, through premiere pro you can still do without even using audition so let's go ahead and get started i think the first thing i want to go over is how to uh, basically create voiceovers to either different images or different videos. So you know how some people have, uh, you know, they'll start talking and have their video camera on and you see them talking and then they switch over to a piece of video footage and you still hear them talking or they switch over to like an image and you still hear them talking. And then when their video, when their actual video cam comes back, the audio is still in sync. Very easy to do this. What you want to do is, first of all, I always like to do this. You don't have to do this, but I like to unlink my audio track from my video track. If you see when I move this around, uh, it basically moves together. The audio moves with the video, and I don't want that. I want to be able to have full control over my audio and full control over my video. So what you can do is right click and click unlink here, and this will basically allow you to move each of these around separately. You have a lot more control. Now, say I wanted to, let's just take a quick listen to this. Do one because it's like a staple video that every channel sort of has. And I think it's going to be sort of, it's going to be kind of fun. And, and so as you see, uh, we have the video and the audio in sync perfectly. But let's just say I wanted to uh, grab this piece of video. As you see, this is another piece of video uh, footage that I have. <laughs> This is, this is a little series I used to do my gaming channel a long time ago, um, but we're going to go ahead and use it for, for this tutorial. Say I wanted to add this piece of video footage uh, onto, onto this video, but instead of having, instead of seeing myself, instead of seeing myself here talk, I want to switch over to this footage and still hear myself talking. Well, first of all, you're going to need to do is, once again, right click and unlink. You're going to need to delete your, the second video's audio, right? So we deleted the audio. Then what you're going to need to do is uh, cut out your video. It basically snaps. You grab your razor tool here and it snaps to the start and the end of your second video here on top. And make sure you cut out that portion from your first video, your, your primary main video. Then you can just drag this into the little section. And because you've used a razor tool and it snaps to the beginning and the end, it's very easy to just move it down. If you want, then you can even add uh, transitions like so. And then a transition over here and now you see that we actually still have we retain the audio from the video track but we actually have secondary footage running one of these videos and i just wanted to do one because it's like a staple video that every channel sort of has and so there you go and that looks a bit weird because I don't have it scaled to frame size. There we go. One of these videos, and I just wanted to do one because it's like a staple video that every channel sort of has. And I think it's gonna be sort of, it's gonna be kind of fun and interesting to see. So that's how you basically create a voiceover over other uh, footage. You do the same thing exactly with a picture. You a picture, you do the same thing. You drag it over, snap it to the beginning and the end, and then just drag it down here. Now, 
Uh, say you wanted to add uh, some background music, right? So uh, here's the background track that I have. All I did basically is I dragged... Oh, go away. There we go. I dragged this to my second audio channel uh, right here. This is your second audio channel. Your first audio channel is always going to be for your video. Your second audio channel is here with the uh, underneath the video's audio channel here. So uh, when we play this... Today I want to do something that's kind of unique. Now there's two bad things that are happening. Uh, let me go ahead and, well, let me go ahead and watch this graph here. See this graph on the right side here? Watch how this boosts all the way to the red here. This is bad. The reason why this is bad is because it's far too loud. Uh, so first of all, uh, the obvious problem is that the music is way too loud, right? So how, how do we decrease the music's volume so that we can still hear our original video. Well, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, if you just want to do it very quickly and you know, if you don't want to do any fine adjustments, what you can do is grab this little box here and just drag this upwards so that you can see the audio waveform down here. What you can then do is go down and grab this little line here. You might not see it, but there is a line right here, a white line here, and you can grab it and drag it down and it'll basically change the decibel value. And the decibel value is basically the audio level of how high or how low it's gonna change in volume. So if you hold, if you go and drag it, you can change, you can see it change drastically. If you hold down Alt, uh, you can basically fine tune it a bit. So we're gonna go bring it down to, I usually, it usually works around the 30s for me. That's usually what works for me when I do my editing unique to every channel it seems like every channel has one of these videos and i just wanted to do one because it's like a staple video so as you can see now it's a bit better now if you also feel like your video is still too low the video audio channel has one also it has a little white bar as well a little white line right in the middle go ahead and grab it and drag it all the way up you know that every channel sort of has and i think it's gonna be sort of it's gonna be kind of fun and interesting to see what people say now, let's just say that your video is very soft in volume and, you know, right now, if you move this bar all the way up, you'll notice that we can only go to 6 decibels. We can only go to 6 dB. You can only increase it by 6. But what happens if you have a really low sounding piece of footage and that 6 isn't going to cut it? It's not going to make it loud enough. What you can do is right click and then head to audio gain. And in this audio gain, set gain to, and you could put this all the way up. Well, we can put it to, uh, I don't know, 15 dB. I don't want to make it too loud because it's gonna, it's gonna probably blast your blast your headphones off like mine. But let's just let, hopefully it's not too loud. Now I have a, oh my god, it's way too loud. <laughs> okay, okay, that's way too loud. Sorry about that. Um, but as you can see, the reason why they have a limit to 6 dB is because they, they want to avoid things like that. They don't want you putting it all the way up and then, you know, you blasting your blasting your headphones off. So that's why they have a limit. But if you but if you need to, for example, my, my piece of footage here is fine. I don't need to go past 6. But say you need to go past 6 because your footage isn't loud enough, you can right click and click audio gain and then change the value here manually. All right. Now... Uh, the other thing you can do, what I want to go over, is audio mixing. And this is pretty important and it's very useful and very helpful as well. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and bring this back here. And your audio mixer should be right here. If you don't see this window, you can go up to Windows and you can click Audio Mixer. And here's your audio mixer. Now, depending on how many audio tracks you have will depend on how many of these uh, how many of these mixers you have control of. So we're gonna go ahead and actually, we don't need the video footage that much, so we're gonna go ahead and make our audio mixer a bit bigger. Now what you'll see is that right now, two of these are active. This one right here and this one right here. This one's not active because it's grayed out, as you can see. Now here you have audio one and audio two and audio three. Uh, these basically are the respective audio tracks in volume that are on your timeline here. Audio 1 is basically your video's audio. Audio 2 is the song that you've imported. There is no Audio 3 because we don't have anything in the third audio channel. As you can see, we scroll down, there's nothing in the third audio channel. So Audio 3 isn't active. So this is a great little representation of how you can view your music's volume and your voice volume. 
Uh, what I suggest you also do, if you right click some of these, you can uh, show valleys, show peaks, static peaks, uh, show color gradient. Valleys are basically the low peaks. Uh, peaks are basically the high peaks. Peaks are basically the maximum volume you get to. Valleys are the lowest volumes you get to while the audio is uh, playing. I like to have both of these check marked. The difference between static peaks and dynamic peaks, uh, static peaks is just uh, a general, it's a general peak and valley representation of the audio. For example, I'll show it to you right now real quick. If we click static, and hello YouTube, GS Man Smart here, and today I want to do something that's kind of unique to every channel. It seems like you see that the valley here is only is only tracked by the maximum that it's gotten to. Like every channel has one of these videos, and I just wanted to. And do And these one blue ones right here, like the blue ones that you see, are the the valleys. Staple here. video that every channel sort of has, and I think it's now it's static. It only records the highest and the lowest it gets to. If you click dynamic, which I like to use, it sort of gives you a, not an average, but it sort of gives you a, every time there's a new valley or a new peak, it gives it to you. You can sort of get an average of it, sort of. Uh, it's great for visualizing to see which, which of these mixes you need to make uh, louder or softer. So if we look at dynamic, you'll see them change a bit more. It's gonna be sort of, it's gonna be kind of fun and interesting to see what people say. Now, I have a spam, I have a spam filter on my comments. I have. So why do you want this mixer? Well, for one, you want this mixer so you can get an idea of where your where your different audio channels are are basically maxing out at and uh, minimizing at. I have like a black. As you can setup. see here, we get to about this section right here. If I were to move this down some, so that some comments get filtered out. I got some mean comments from there. I pulled a couple from uh, this morning when I went. You never want to go all the way up to the red because that makes it that makes the auto sound kind of bad. So moving this moving this little this little uh, I don't know if this is like a button or a tab or like this little moving this little thing here whatever it's called. Uh, you can go ahead and put this just under the maximum. I some of the comments, uh, answering some of you guys on all my channels. So yes, this, these are comments that come from across all my channels, whether it be the, the, the uh, tutorials channel, the gaming channel, the advice channel. And here, the same thing. You can go ahead and move this up and down. The music channel or this vlogging channel. Typically speaking, this audio mixer does the exact same thing if you were to go and uh, do this. Remember how we used to move this up and down and we move this up and down? This is basically doing that exact same thing but you have a visual representation. Sometimes having a visual representation is really good because you're able to uh, see where audio is capping out at. You can see if the music is reaching the same peak as your uh, vocals are. If your vocals are reaching the same peak as your music, you may want to move your music down a bit more. So this is how I usually do it. So uh, you can clearly move these sliders around or you can just type in numbers here as well. You can type numbers in or you can move sliders around, but it's nothing too complicated. If you like having a visual representation, then you can use this graph and you can use these sliders. If you just wanna listen to it by ear and move the sliders around the timeline, you can do that just as well. And either of the two methods are effective. Now, the last thing I wanna go over is how to fade in and fade out uh, different audio, whether it's music, whether it's your vocals in the actual video or whatnot. So that's what we're gonna go over next. So there's two ways of doing this. Once again, uh, the way I like to do it is using the pen tool because for me, it's just a bit easier. So what I do is I zoom into the timeline here, holding down Alt and using the scroll wheel. If I want my music to fade in, for example, what I do is I grab my pen tool here and I make, where do I want my music to start going to 100% in volume? Right around here. Where do I want my music to start at zero? Well, at the beginning of the video like that. And you just drag it all the way down. And you'll if you take a listen now, it fades in. You can move this bar further away and more up and you can get a greater fade. Right? And you could do the exact same thing uh, when, you do, when you're fading out your music by putting two dots and dragging one all the way to the bottom. So that's one, that's one way of doing it. However, the other way of doing this is by, let me just control Z all the way back. Let me just drag the track in again. The other way of doing this is by going to your effects here and your effects here are right here, your effect controls. 
and pressing the audio track here, and you see we have volume here, what you can do is keyframe this. And just like you keyframe everything else, you keyframe this the exact same way. So our audio starts here. Now, say I want to go uh, maybe like right around here. I want to have it max volume. What I can do is grab my level here. You see this level right here? I can make a keyframe here. And once I make this keyframe, it'll be at zero. This is how my volume will be at its maximum level. Uh, this zero is basically determined by the line here that you've created. So don't put this to maximum because that's just your decibel gain. As you can see, if I if I already had my line all the way down here, then this isn't zero anymore. This would be your maximum level. Uh, don't don't change this value because if you've already adjusted the value by this line here down here, this is what this is why I like using the pen tool because it can get, it can get a bit confusing if you've already changed the uh, volume level through the line here. Uh, so the pen tool makes it a bit easier. But if you're gonna do it this way, uh, put your maximum point first, your maximum keyframe first. So as you see, I put my keyframe here and it makes that. Then don't touch anything and just drag the track all the way to the left. And this is where you'll wanna grab this and move it all the way to the left, the maximum negative. And the maximum negative is basically silence. And then when you play this, it gets to, it gets to your maximum and your maximum is determined by how far you move this bar down. You see, with the pen tool, you don't need to worry about which keyframe to put first because all you gotta do is just make two dots like so and then drag the left one all the way down. So that's why it's a bit easier there. Um, and the same technique works with if you're, if you're fading it out, you obviously wanna um, put the first keyframe, with, which is your maximum, and then your last keyframe, you wanna go and drag it all the way back down to zero. Well, not to zero, but to, neg to the maximum negative number, and it'll slowly start fading out. If you, want, if you need to zoom in, you could zoom in like that. By, by grabbing the little gray boxes here, and you can zoom in and you can move your keyframes around if you need to, uh, but that's besides the point. So that's kind of everything I wanted to go over. It's kind of how you fade in, fade out, create voiceovers, add uh, backup music, your background music to your video or to any of your vocals. I would say the most annoying part is trying to find a good balance. Sometimes I'll be sitting there for five, 10 minutes trying to figure out, okay, well, is this, can I still hear my voice? Is the music too loud or the music too low? And I would say the best thing to do is just to look at your mixer. And once you look at your mixer, if you see that your music is reaching the same level as your uh, voice is, then obviously bring the music down. If you see that your music is higher than your voice, obviously move the music down as well. The mixer is a great way to see representation of uh, the active dynamic levels of your volume while the video is playing. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, any confusions, go leave it down in the comment box below. Definitely down there answering any questions you have. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something or if you liked some of my other videos that I've done on Premiere Pro, After Effects, GIMP, Photoshop, lots of different software content on the guy. But if you liked any of those, you can always donate a dollar to my Patreon page. All you gotta do is click, click the card in the top right corner of the screen and it'll bring you to the page. I also have a gaming channel, vlogging channel, music channel, and device channel. If you wanna check that out, go ahead and look in the description. Links are there as well as on the end card. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Lots of more uh, software tutorials coming your way and already tons of them on the channel that I think you'll enjoy. That's pretty much for this video. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GSMMSmart and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.